Today I'll tackle a very specific topic of ISO, that's only the app reviews, because most of you have already a good idea of the basics. Uh, it's kind of the other side of what Tom talked previously, because it's when you, you gather um, after some time reviews. So I'll only talk about that, and I've got 15 minutes. How the, is that working? Okay. A uh, little bit about me. Um, I'm French. I work at 8 Fit, um, fitness app based here in Berlin. And the talk is not about us, so let's move on. Before talking about reviews, I think this is quite the perception of the normal users. And what this graph is saying is basically, if you're under four-star average, go back to the product, relaunch, do something, because you never, never go, go anywhere. That's the first thing. I gave this talk uh, at ASO Bar Camp about, I don't know, two, three months ago, and it had two parts is why are reviews so important in ASO and how to manage to get more and to get better ones. So today the, short, the talk is a little bit short, so I only tackle the second problem. But I summarized the, the first part of, you actually can check the talk online on SlideShare. I think they share those slides, so if you can't see the URL, you'll get them there. I wanted to summarize that part of the talk in one graph, which is reviews are very important because they act on the two parts of ASO. ASO is not only about ranking higher and getting more visibility in the App Store, it's also about converting those people into downloads. And for me, the conversion part is even more important. Because if you manage to trick your way to have more people visiting your App Store page, but it's actually a trick and you're not delivering what you promise, people are not going to download the app. So it's kind of useless in the end. And for me, it's very important that the whatever you can do with reviews, but also with keywords, screenshot, etc., is really aim at the both of it. Like, you want to position higher, but really what matters in the end is that you really want people to install, to install the app when they visit your, your store. So, before, before talking about how to get more reviews and how to get better reviews, I wanted to underline a few problems that, are, that, that we have with reviews, and mostly in, it's both stores, but mostly the iOS store. So the first thing is that users are very radical, Usually they would leave either five star or one star, but there are very few in the middle. I think there are stats about that, but I didn't want to put too many numbers in, in the talk today. And the second thing is not only they're radical, but they're irrational. So here you got a very old review from an app that's not mine, and you've got a review from yesterday from an app, a guy saying, oh yeah, this app is good, one star. Like what the fuck? It's the best app I've ever used. Three stars. Like, come on, man. So there are a lot of irrationality. And also, and if you have to just remember one thing about this talk, it would be that, is that the war is not on getting more four stars and five stars. It's about how do I avoid the one star? Because everybody is between four and 4.8, let's say, except if you have one review, then you have five. That's great. Um, the war is about how do I avoid the one and two stars? Because you're going to need seven five stars to balance one one star. And if there are people putting four stars in there, then you need 20, 30, 40 reviews to balance one for one star. So here you've got a funny, a funny comment on the left uh, about a nap that warns about tornado, and one guy wasn't happy because he actually went into the tornado. So most of the talk about how to leverage reviews is not about getting better reviews. It's about how do I split out all the bad ones. Another problem, and that's iOS only, is that it's a one-way communication. Three, three years ago, there's this article that was posted on the next web, I think. It was saying Apple needs to open the channel for developers to actually answer people. Uh, and it's still not possible today. And that's kind of a problem because sometimes the user is irrational. And maybe he's asking for a feature that actually is in the app and you j j just can't tell him. There's a very interesting link at the bottom on how you can actually contact people back. So on the Play Store, it's very easy because you can answer them directly in the store, but that's public. On the iOS, on the iOS Store, you can also look for them by the Google Plus and Gmail. On the iOS Store, it's not possible, but most users, you can find them through Google or whatever. We've got a guy that specializes in this in the company, and I've, I would say he finds about two-thirds of the, of the user. We managed to track them back from the back end and identify them and contact them privately. So yeah, there are ways around this, but it would be nice that Apple change a little bit. 
Another thing about the irrationality of users commenting is that users don't perceive your app the same way you are. So in the example here that you can probably not read, it's people commenting about bad restaurants and bad hotel on the reviews for TripAdvisor. So you will get that, and eventually if you're in that business. So which is another problem, and it's all the more important to be able to answer people. And for us, I'll come to that later. So I'll come to that. And the last painful point about reviews is that it's a long process for the users to actually leave you run review. So you really have to motivate them a lot before you're gonna send them there. I don't know if this five minute average is true, but what's true is that, yeah, for the user, it's a, it's a lot of work to actually go to the app store, find it, write his review, post it, etc. Okay, so lots of problems. How do we tackle them? This pix is by Aptentive, and actually if you're interested into this topic about reviews, I think it's one of the best sources. They published a white paper on, the, on app reviews. I think it's one of the best sources out there, somewhere linked in the talk. So the first thing is that people realize that reviews actually have a super high impact on positioning your app in the App Store and for ASO. So people start begging users for, for, to get more reviews, because getting more reviews and more downloads. So, okay, let's ask everyone. So the problem with that, which you might see on the right or not, is that people leave you crap reviews. So here what people are saying is, I love your app, but stop asking me for a review. I can't handle it anymore. And so if you beg too much, it's not, maybe you're going to have lots of reviews, but actually it's going to affect you negatively. So don't beg. How to do it? There's this developer, which is on Marco.org. It's pretty famous. What he decided is, I'm not going to beg the user ever about review. So I'm going to hide the review link just in the settings part. And only people who are really motivated are going to eventually find it. And that's what it did. And in some way, it was successful because he only had four and five stars, but on a very limited number of, of reviews. So I wouldn't recommend that neither um, because you won't get enough of them. Actually, you can see the reviews. So he's got 3,000, but if you compare to his user base, it's kind of small. And the timing is paramount. When do I ask user for a review? So actually, in the screen I showed before on the big one, what you probably didn't see was the sentence that was on top. If you don't filter out when you put the, the pop-up about, oh, please review me, you might eventually come at a very bad time uh, in the experience. Maybe the app just crashed and the guy relaunched, which is the case on this slide, or any other. So you have, you have to carefully choose the moment you're going to display the, the review pop-up to your user. So the first thing is no sex on first day. And then you're never going to ask a review after the, the, the first few launch, basically because people don't know your app. So eventually, they're going to be annoyed by the intrusion, but also they're going to, they don't know what to say about it. So just wait for a number of sessions. I've read anywhere from five to ten sessions to start asking. Depends a lot on what your app does and how, uh, how big is your retention also, but wait a bit before asking. And the second thing is wait for a haha moment. Um, games, for example, they usually do that after you pass a very difficult level. Why? Because you've got the feeling of accomplishment here, and obviously you're more inclined to let a good review in that moment. So every, every app has its different good moment for the user. In our case, so we do fitness, uh, we wait for a user to accomplish a full workout, and then rate the workout positively, and only if he does the two action, uh, we, we eventually prompt them to leave a review. The other thing is limit, limit the intrusion of the pop-up. Nobody loves pop-up. So try to integrate it in a, in a smart way. That's what Circa did. So what they did is they put the, instead of putting a first pop-up and then go to the review, they actually integrate it into the content, which for them is a little bit easier because it's a new speed. Uh, but f- find a way to integrate it within the app without having to pop up the user because even if it's a good moment, just the mere fact of pop-upping is going to annoy user. And if they are annoyed, probably they're going to leave you a bad, a bad review, even if they like the app. So this is a good way of integrating them. And the other thing is filter them. I, I said, and I insist, this is the most important thing, avoid the one star. So the first thing people did instead of rate, rate later or never, is they try to filter out, okay, if you like the app, go to rate. If you don't like the app, go to customer support. So that's 
That was the first move, and I think it's something you absolutely need to do because it's better than the initial setup, but it's actually not enough. You can put that one more step ahead and actually put several, like split out your crowd, like, do you like the app? Yes, okay, let's pop up the, let's, uh, and let's put the review. But before that, you ask, do you like the app? Yes. Would you be willing to leave a review? Yes. And, and then only you put the pop up because you would have filtered twice. Maybe there are less people, but those people who click twice on the button, they're actually much more inclined to leave four or five stars. So you've got a great link. Actually, this, this, uh, this picture is very famous and it's from a, a talk that has uh, lots of read. I really recommend it. They develop it much better than I'm doing right now. The example is good and they show a lot of detail on how they, how the thought process eventually came to that. And this is what everybody's copying now. So just do it. I already mentioned that about answering people. So in the team, we've got someone who actually track users. And we've got the lucky part in the app because we've got a, a chat within the app. So what we do is that we answer on the Google Play Store where you can answer, we answer people in two very different ways. The first one is actually answering on the Play Store console. But the thing is that this is public for everyone. So when you're answering a user there, you're actually not answering the user. You're answering everybody who's reading the review. So let's say, I don't know, there was a crash or the guy can't log in. Uh, what you're gonna answer the guy is not, oh yeah, you can do this and this. Is you want to show the other user that you're here for him. If you have a problem, the support is there and answer you and have a direct contact or whatever. So when you answer on the Play Store, don't think about the user. Think about the other users that are reading the review. What we do is we answer the user within the app directly with the chat. So we send him a fitness coach or a nutritionist or the QA guy to talk to him within the app so we can have a private talk with him. And on iOS, we try to identify them. And across both stores, we, we really insist on that. Like every time we've got a one star, what we try to do is to revert them into having a better review. And I would say in almost half of the cases, we manage the user to change his review, which is making a huge difference in the end because this, this one star that's review, uh, that's removed is like we get 10, 10 reviews instead. So this has been a great strategy for us and it's keeping busy, uh, one of our support guy, but definitely worth it. The last part, uh, is follow the latest change because things are changing all the time. So both of these examples are coming from the Play Store, but actually the iOS store changed from time to time also. The first change that we recently saw is that instead of putting four, four and a half and five, which was the case before, Google is now actually putting the real average in front of everyone, what you can see on the left. I understand this is rolled out everywhere now. I have the US store on mine and it's been there for about two months or something, but I understand it's everywhere now. And the right part is being rolled out right now, but even if the user can't see it, you can already see it in the, in the search console. In the, in the developer console. Um, Tom before mentioned that review mining is very good for finding new keywords and for keywords discovery. And actually, I, I totally agree. Like extract, your, extract your, your reviews and mine them for keywords you wouldn't have come up by yourself because users perceive your app differently. But actually, Google is not helping you do that and it's filtering the most search uh, things directly and it's starting to display it to everyone. So definitely check that because if you've got one of them like too many ads, getting in 600 different reviews, well actually this one is a bit hard to tackle, but video problems in 800 reviews, then maybe you have to prioritize that in, in your roadmap like because you see it's a major problem, but it's a major problem that, dis that is displayed to every user. So it's a good way to, to prioritize uh, what you need to fix and also to discover more keywords. How do we do it at 8Fit? So the way to find out is you download the app, you do a few workouts and you see. But actually it's pretty simple, is we try to combine everything I said before. So we try to filter out, uh, we try to do it at a good moment. We try to filter out uh, people who are willing to let a review. We contact them back, we review the, we review the keyword and so on. I can give you a little bit more detail in private after. And what not to do? So there are a few ways to treat that because reviews are, are so, such a big impact. So the first thing that you shouldn't do and is actually forbidden by the by both stores' uh, rules, the first one is to give instant to people to download your app. I was I was checking a few articles before I update my talk and I actually see two posts who are saying 
do incentivize user to leave you a review. Yeah, I'm saying don't because eventually Apple is going to kick you out. So that's what the app on the left does. Like you can get coins if you leave a review. Just don't do that. And the thing on the right is pretty. You some some would say, but that's pretty much the same as saying, uh, do you want to rate the app? Yes, no. But actually, you can't ask for a five star, and you shouldn't do it because not only it's forbidden by Apple and Google, but also it's lame for users. So just don't do it. Actually, this example is coming from Electronic Arts, uh, I think. Uh, so pretty big app. And instead of removing the app, Apple gently contacted them until they changed the screen. But this screen is like two or three years old, uh, so it's not really relevant. The next thing is you can buy fake reviews. So there's this picture that was posted on Weibo about six months ago and went viral everywhere. Well, actually, nobody knows if they are downloading apps or putting in fake reviews or whatever. What I can tell you is there are people who sell reviews who actually get contacted every once in a while, like the SEO spammers. So now you've got the app review spammers coming to you. Uh, and it's actually pretty cheap to get reviews. So high impact on the, play, uh, on the store, cheap reviews, seems like a great recipe for success. But it's actually also possibly a recipe for failure. And the example that's very recent, I think, is from last month, is a Canadian company got fined a million dollars for leaving fake reviews. So actually, they weren't buying to this Chinese store. They're asking every single employee to review the app every time they have the new release. They got fined one million for that. So just don't do it neither. And the next, not working? Hmm. I don't know. Did it run out of battery or something? Hmm. Whatever. Um, the talk is finished, but I, I had an interesting slide just after that with a cheat sheet that you will be able to download. It's uh, all the don'ts and all the do's. So that will be an exclusive for people who... James, are you doing that? Yeah. So we start from the beginning again. Fantastic. I love it. Here we go. Oh, I had another one. Yeah, can you go to the next one, please? So actually, buying reviews, there's one example that totally nailed it, and that's Flappy Birds. That guy managed to have more reviews in a month that Candy Crush had in its whole life. That's just not happening organically. But actually, it's how it kick-started the whole thing. And after that, obviously, it went viral, and people were very engaged because the app was challenging and so on. And it did really good things with the product. And that's actually a real story of how it kick-started the, the, the whole thing. A kind of an interesting thing. I would still uh, recommend against it. Can you move one slide forward, please? Oh, I can now. Fantastic. So that's the cheat sheet. So I'm not going to read it because I already said all of it. But uh, maybe I forget one. No. Monitor and listen. Yeah, I forget that one. Is that care the, uh, mind the reviews, like read them, because usually people are reporting problems that are real. Like they are not only irrational users out there, they are also rational users and that are pinpointing problems you might have. So actually monitoring them, we, we have a, we put them in our Slack feed uh, and visible to everyone so that whenever there are problems coming, it's an early way to detect them. I've got a few slides. I see I'm uh, one minute over time. I still do that one slide because I think it's a very interesting concept. Uh, we're starting putting an event on the button that goes to leaving a review, and we're building an audience based on that, putting it into Facebook as a custom audience, and we're trying... We're not trying because it needs a lot of volume, so we're not building the custom audience, but the plan is to try to target lookalike people based on reviewer. Instead of having lookalikes of people who download your app or pay or whatever, love, love the app, try to build a lookalike audience only based on review people that might generate more, more review themselves. So it's something I don't have the outcome yet. Uh, we thought it's um, somebody uh, um, from Li Liftoff Network that gave me the idea, and I thought it was a great idea. So maybe next year in the talk, I will be able to give you the outcome. Thank you very much.